What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys and welcome to another installment of my Celebrating Disney series where I take a look at all the main things animated and live action under the main Disney banner. This is an animated review this week and we're diving into the first release of what's officially known as Disney's Silver Age, the animated films from the 50s and 60s the last animated movies released in Walt Disney's lifetime and today's review is considered a comeback of Disney animation after the string of financial disappointments and going a little stale with the package films this is the first singular narrative film and it was the movie that pretty much maintained Disney's longevity as a studio the movie I'm talking about is Cinderella Before I go any further, I will leave a link down in the description below of all the reviews I've done in Celebrating Disney so far, all the animated stuff, all the live action stuff. There's a lot down there you'll enjoy if you're a Disney fan, so I'll leave the link down below. So Cinderella was released in 1950. It was Walt Disney's first singular narrative animated film since Bambi after a string of compilation anthology package films that dominated the remainder of the 1940s. Obviously, it's based on the classic fairy tale, and in Cinderella, after a life of abuse from her evil stepmother, Cinderella has faith that her dreams will come true. With help from her loyal mice friends and a wave of her fairy godmother's wand, Cinderella's rags are magically transformed into a glorious gown, and off she goes to the royal ball. But when the clock strikes midnight, the spell is broken, leaving only a single glass slipper, the only key to the ultimate fairy tale ending. So like I said, Cinderella had to be the make or break film from Disney Animation. Disney was falling on hard times. Their only monster hit at the time was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Movies that are considered classics now like Pinocchio, Fantasia, and Bambi were originally financial bombs that cost the studio a lot of money. The studio was deep in debt. And while they did make money on the package films, it wasn't enough to keep the studio rolling. Fortunately, they had just enough money to fund Cinderella, and because of the money they had and Walt Disney's dedication to the Cinderella, as he found Cinderella a deeply relatable character, similar to his personal life. He grew up a poor kid, and it seemed like he worked hard to get to the person that he was by the time of Cinderella the movie's development. So he always had a fascination with Cinderella and a deep resonation with the character. Because of that, the animators worked hard to get this movie off the ground. And at the end of the day, Cinderella was the movie that, like I said, kept the Disney ball rolling. Because of Cinderella's success, more animated films were produced. It inspired Disney to explore further into uh, live action filmmaking because they had the money to do so. It inspired Disney to go into the TV medium with shows like Davy Crockett and Disneyland. And speaking of Disneyland, the success of Cinderella gave Walt the money to fund Walt Disney's biggest dream, which was the concept of Disneyland the amusement park. A lot of amazing things that came from Cinderella's success. Now, what, what do I think of the movie? I do think this movie is a classic. Is it one of my personal favorites? No. Still think it's a good movie. This was one of those movies where I've always respected, but it's never been one of my personal favorites. Now, if you ask my sister about Cinderella, it was like her favorite Disney princess growing up. I think she dressed up as Cinderella for Halloween. She just loved the movie and watched it a lot as a kid. I didn't really get into it as a kid if you saw the Lessons Animation Taught Us essay I did. I didn't get into a lot of the princess movies because of my childish immaturity. But I did get into, I like the mice characters and Bibbidi Bobby Boo was catchy as a kid so I guess I'll give it that. But I do have a lot of respect for it now being a hardcore Disney animation guy. So let me get into my positives with Cinderella. One. The animation in this movie is so beautiful to look at. This there, There's a lot of awesome trivia about this movie. 
This was the first animated Disney film where Disney's legendary nine old men were in charge of the directing character animations and those were Walt Disney's most trusted animators that were with Walt from the beginning and stayed with the Disney company even after Walt Disney's death and they were just huge fans of animation and the Disney name. So this was a movie where they take full charge of character animation and you can definitely see that with this movie. Uh, this is probably Mary Blair, a uh, female animator prominent in that era of Disney. Her artwork in this movie is just gorgeous. Probably the most stunning artwork that she that she crafted in any Disney film, I would say, is in Cinderella. It's just, wow, some of the backgrounds in this movie are just phenomenal. Especially during the dancing scene with Cinderella and the Prince. Uh, another trivia, this is the first Disney film that had extensive use of rotoscoping where uh, where they take live actors and they they do the sequences, they film the sequences with the actors that later get animated to make the characters as real as possible. And they did that in some sequences, but this was the first one that had extensive use of it. And I, it made the characters move around more realistically and it, you get to see the innovations of animation continue to play out as the movies go on. And Cinderella, it's definitely one of those innovative movies as far as techniques are concerned. And this is a stunning looking movie. There's a lot of things in this you take for granted, and Joe Disney guy brought this up in his review, but the, the, the use of shadows in this film when characters are walking around, you don't think of that, and that's hard to animate being a 2D animated film, but... They do it so seamlessly, it just blows me away how they do it. One of my favorite shots of the movie is where Cinderella's being uh, pulled by her stepmother and enforces her on the extra chores. And there's a shot of like the shadows from the window and it makes it look like Cinderella is locked up in a prison somewhere. She feels trapped. And I just love the visual metaphor of that scene. It's just pretty genius stuff they were able to do in this film. So the technical stuff is great. I think the songs in this movie are fantastic. Uh, believe it or not, I love Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. It's a catchy song, but I actually think some of the slower songs in this, I think, are the strongest in my opinion. Like, Sing Sweet Nightingale is just a criminally underrated song, and it was one of the first uses of overdubbing in a song where the voice actress for Cinderella sung all the parts seamlessly and it's just beautiful to hear uh the dreams of wish your heart makes fantastic song one of my personal favorite disney songs as well and so this is love the love song with cinderella and the prince i think is pretty underrated as well but bibbidi bobbidi boo's a classic i see why it's a signature song cinderella is a likable lead i like how kind-hearted she is even when being in the worst situations I think being patient is a good trait you can learn from this movie. And and still being kind-hearted, like I said, even in the worst situations. And remaining positive is a good trait to have. And Cinderella, I think she is a likable lead. And her story does send good messages, in my opinion. I do like Cinderella as a character. Lady Tremaine is such a sadistic, antagonistic character. She's so cruel. She's so heartless. And I just love seeing her manipulation and favoritism brought on screen. And uh, that voice actress would later go on to play Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty. And she was just amazing at that time. She was awesome. Uh, some of the side characters are a lot of fun too. I enjoy Cinderella's talking mice, particularly Jack and Gus. The Lucifer the Cat. Yes, <laughs> that cat is just awesome. Yeah, I think Disney knew what they were doing by naming the cat Lucifer. No! Anastasia and Drusilla, the stepsisters, are scene stealers. And there's, there's some funny stuff in there. Uh, the Grand Duke is a funny little character. Uh, there's the King as well. So character-wise, th there's some entertaining characters in here. My issues with Cinderella were lie in the writing. On the surface, I like the story. Cinderella's a great story. Uh, servant girl Cinderella abused all these years, still positive. 
and she wants to have a better life and then the fairy godmother shows up and you know does the whole transformation into a lovely princess and then falls in love with the prince loses the glass slipper search to find her the end classic story i feel like they should have dived into the deeper me of the story for it to be a top tier Disney film. The movie failed for me to really care about why Cinderella's in that situation. I feel like the opening montage is a bit rushed, which is weird because Snow White dives into the meat of where she is starting out as a servant girl. But that movie relies all on the emotions and that's why Snow White's still a top tier Disney film. Here, the movie really tries to hit hard that Cinderella has been so abused over the years. You want her out of this. I just wanted more of how she got there. You see that you know she had a loving father. Mother died. He marries the stepmother thinking, oh, that's going to work out. But she has selfish ambitions in mind. And that's good, but... The movie didn't really have a real reason why she would stay after all these years, especially since she's a grown woman. And that's something I think the live action remake did a lot better in diving into Cinderella's, the psyche of Cinderella in that situation. Uh, another issue I have the script. I feel like Cinderella felt sidelined uh, for a good chunk of the movie. And this is only a 75 minute film, an hour and 15 minutes. So. It was weird that Cinderella felt sidelined. Like the first 20 minutes of the film, 10 minutes of the 20 minutes is a side story with the mice struggling to get their food and being chased by the cat Lucifer. And I feel like that took away from character development. I know cartoons, the cartoon mentality of the past is different than the present. A lot of us now care about storytelling and stuff. Uh, a lot of the mentality in a lot of these cartoons back then was about the cartoon gags. I get that. I mean, Snow White had a lot of cartoon gags. But they didn't overshadow the storyline. I feel like the cartoon gags in Cinderella did overshadow the storyline, especially when it cut back to the mice when there should have been more time on Cinderella. And I think a worse character development than Cinderella, which she's still a well-written character, don't get me wrong, even with some of the faults of the script and the writing, the prince is the worst handle of this film. And I think of all the Disney princes, Prince Charming is probably the weakest. He literally has no character in this film. Yes, the prince in Snow White was kind of a bland character. He serves the purpose of the movie, though. One song kind of gave him a personality in that film, but... In Cinderella, he's just stereotypical, good-looking prince. That's about it. He only has, like, one line of dialogue in this film. And I don't even like the motivations for the ball, to be honest. It's not because the prince wanted to find an eligible maiden to be his princess. Nope. The king wanted to have grandbabies, so he forces the prince to get into a ball so he can rush them into getting married. And I didn't really like the selfish ambitions of the king in this. And something about that character kind of rubbed me off the wrong way. Like, things will go his way. He executes people for no reason. Like, or it's implied he does, even though it's played for laughs. And something about that really rubbed me off the wrong way. I don't know why. I really want to get into the uh, kingdom of this movie, but... The prince is so bland in the reasonings for the setup of this film isn't really the best reasons, and it's really hard to get into the main meat of the story. It's just a little awkward at times. Uh, another issue I have is, like I said, because the prince is not a fleshed out character, stuff you would really like to see, stuff you think in your head about things that should happen in the story, like them finding out that the mystery girl at the ball with the fanciest dress and the glass slipper was just a servant girl all these years. Uh, will they still care about her even if she's not from royalty? I think that's something that should have been addressed in the film. Apparently there was a scene where Cinderella meets the prince in her rags and 
Well, we see the prince still didn't care about that and still loved her for what she was. And I feel like that would have been a great character moment. It was an, it was animated. The scene was animated, but it was cut. I think it was for pacing and budget. And that's a little frustrating because that would have been a great character moment and it maybe would have cared for the relationship even more. I feel like this is probably the most rushed romance of any of the animated Disney Princess films. Uh, they just meet, have So This Is Love, the end. They're already in love. And as much as I love So This Is Love, one of the most underrated Disney songs, uh, I am frustrated that the romance of this movie is pretty lackluster. It, the movie does fall flat in the end because of that. There's some aspects of the story I just can't get into in this film. And it's a bit of a shame. And an unpopular opinion, I actually do like the live-action remake of Cinderella over the animated one because a lot of the issues I have with the original film, they're fixed in the new one. And I know that is an unpopular opinion for many, many people, especially those on the anti-live-action Disney remake backlash. But I gotta be honest, I actually prefer the live-action remake, but that's a different review for a different day. All in all, uh, the original Cinderella, the animated film, is a classic. Don't get me wrong. Just because I have some issues with the film, it doesn't mean I hate it. I still think it's a good film. Cinderella is still a solid character. I think the animation in this movie is gorgeous. The songs are fantastic. There's still some solid messages in there about hope and patience that's very important. I have problems with patience, especially with other people around me, so I can relate to Cinderella's struggles, uh, kind of like Walt Disney. And I do think it's still a watchable film. I think a lot of people, I, I see why this movie is a classic, and it's still a movie that people can look back on and say is a Disney classic that shaped Disney as we know him today. I can see the issues of this movie, though, on a narrative standpoint. And the emotions can outweigh narrative flaws in some of their other films, particularly Snow White. I love Snow White. That movie is awesome. But Cinderella, there's just so much in this movie that I have problems with, with like some of the character developments that it does take me out of the movie a little bit. I guess the live action remake kind of hurt the original movie in my opinion. I know it's unpopular, but man, I just have to be honest about that. Cinderella is still a good movie. I still really like it. And because of it being a classic and still really respecting the film, I'm still going to give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Uh, actually the highest rating on the 3.5 scale on the 100 point scale, which means it's getting a 70 out of 100 or 7 out of 10, whatever you want it. So that was my review of Cinderella. It might be the most controversial review on Celebrating Disney so far along with Song in the South. But, eh, I mean... It's not one of my favorites. I, I like it, but it's ne it was never one of my personal favorites. But I do admire it on a technical level. This is part of my Celebrating Disney series where I celebrate all things Disney, the animated and live action stuff under the main Disney banner. I do the animated movies one week, live action the next, and they alternate. The animated movies are going to be release order, so I'm going for all of the theatrical animated Disney films. In history, live action movies are more freestyle. I usually ask for requests on those. And the next live action review I'll be doing in Celebrating Disney is actually going to be the live action remake. I want to cover more on the live action remake and why I think it's a better film. Even though it might be another controversial opinion from a huge Disney fan. If there's any live action Disney films you'd like me to tackle... And future installments of Celebrating Disney, you can share your thoughts down in the comments below. Also, share me your thoughts down below what you thought of the original Cinderella. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Were you mixed on it? Also, what are your thoughts on the remake? Let me know which version of Cinderella you prefer, the animated or the live action. That'll be an interesting discussion as well. Whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If your comments are respectful, your comments can be potentially featured in future comment channel videos. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button to see more content, and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, uh, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. I hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!